Okay. Let me just get myself finished set up here. Um, no injuries or anything anybody's contending with today? Okay. You do wanna practice yoga typically without shoes. You are welcome to keep your socks on if you wish. I find that the socks slip. If you have socks, I don't know if you found that last week. It, it makes you slip a little bit on the mat, especially if you don't have a very sticky mat. So you might wanna decide whether that's useful for you or not. But either way, you'll still be working. If at any point in your practice, you decide that what I am suggesting that you do does not fit your body, does not fit your mind, it does not fit your spirit, I invite you to ignore me completely. <laughs> I will not be upset. I will not feel like, oh no, bad students, not at all. You wanna honor your body and listen to your body. So I know that a lot of you guys, especially the new ones that have come in, you guys lift weights, you, you know, you work out hard. I see you out there with Tyrone, you know, yeah, exactly. Tossing that giant wheel around and whatnot. This is not this kind of class. <laughs> this might be harder. Thank you. Yes, I agree. This might be harder because this is you challenging just you. Nobody's out here going to tell you, hold it, push it, do it. Come on, come on. There's none of that your own mind and your own heart and spirit is leading you through this practice. So as you start to develop it more, you start to really kind of feel like, ooh, okay, this is really hard work. Welcome, come on, hi, oh my gosh. It's so good to see you. Go ahead, get a spot right there next to Terry. <laughs> okay, and we have a new person come in. Oh, Sudakar and Suma, hi, welcome guys. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start in a comfortable seated position. I advise you guys to grab yourself a block or a um, blanket, place it underneath you. You can use the block or the blanket. And then we're gonna sit cross-legged. Okay, so notice everyone's gonna be in a different position here. Your knees may be way up here, totally cool. It just means your hips need time to relax down. Your knees may be already on the floor and that's awesome. If they are, then great, good. Allow the shoulders to roll back. Take a nice deep inhale and feel your lower abdomen engage. So these are the muscles of the pelvic floor. Draw in through the lower belly and kind of lift up, engage into that lower pelvic floor muscles and then lift the rib cage. Again, the shoulders relax back, hands rest on the knees and close the eyes. Take a nice deep inhale, followed by a slow, gentle exhale. Again, deep breath in. Easy, gentle, slow breath out. Observe if maybe you're holding tension in your back that you can maybe relax a bit. Observe if there's tension in the jaw that you can soften. Maybe take a swallow, let the tongue go limp in the back of the throat. <clears throat> kind of gazing into the darkness behind the eyelids, come into a sense of inner awareness. Perhaps noticing the chest and rib cage rise as you inhale and noticing the drop as you exhale. Feel your sits bones rooted and grounded onto your prop or onto the floor. Your body stable. The head balanced over the shoulders, head and shoulders balanced over the hips. See if you can feel effortless here in this upright seated posture. One more deep breath in. Slow breath out. And then let's gently release the fingertips down to the floor, bring the chin down towards the chest and just start to move the head around a little bit, releasing the neck. Nice deep inhale, nice slow exhale. Continue this pattern of breathing. Maybe just waving the head side to side, observing how the head hangs. Maybe allowing the chin to move to the left shoulder, chin to the right shoulder. And just feel any parts of tension that you might there in the neck and the shoulder area. And then keeping your head tucked under or your chin towards your chest, bring your hands behind you and see if you can interlace your fingers. If interlacing the fingers is not possible, just reach back as far as you can. If you are able to interlace your fingers, try to straighten your arms. 
Again, keep the head tucked under and then just gently press the knuckles onto the floor or onto the prop behind you. And hold there for two breaths. Inhale. Exhale, feeling the openness of the front body as the shoulders roll back. Inhale. Exhale. Now gently blink the eyes open, allow light back into the room, and then inhale, lift the chin. We'll start to release the arms from behind, so let the elbows bend, relax the shoulders, and then inhale, arms extend up, reach and lengthen. So we're going to stay here for a moment, observing the shoulders. Maybe perhaps for you, straightening your arms is not possible. So you might want to bend the elbows a little bit and come into that open shoulder, open chest position. If you can, gazing up towards the sky. Now you see that space between your palms. Let's see if we can get rid of that space. So we're gonna draw the palms together, draw the elbows towards each other. And once the palms touch, gaze towards the thumbs. Draw into the navel, lengthen the spine. Pull down and away through the shoulder blades. Strong work here. One more breath, inhale and exhale gently bring the hands to the heart soften through the shoulders let's close the eyes here and we'll open the sacred space of our practice with one sound om deep breath in And exhale, release the hands, arms up. Let's move into this with a little bit more vinyasa. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, draw the arms up. So we're just connect connecting with breath. Exhale, hands to heart. One more. Inhale, arms up. See if you can bring those palms together, reach and stretch. And now let's go for our twist. Exhale, turn towards the left. So just rotate your torso and then take right hand to your left knee and the left hand behind you, opening through the chest, using your right arm to create leverage as you bring your left hand behind you, look back over left shoulder. We're warming up the spine here, getting ready for our practice. As you take that left arm around, maybe you can find your bind onto your right thigh, only if that's possible. Otherwise, that left hand stays behind and you're creating a sense of lift through the spine. Each inhale lengthens you and each exhale turns you a little bit deeper into the twist. Good, one more breath. Steady exhale. Release your bind, release your left fingertips. Inhale, come all the way back up, palms together, look towards thumbs. Keep pressing down through your sits bones, ground through your pelvic floor. Exhale, other side. So now the left hand comes to the right knee, right hand comes behind. Lengthen up through the torso, twist. Look back over right shoulder. Only if you feel ready, that right hand can come around and you can find your left thigh. Create a nice grip there, even if it's just the fingertips on your waist. Open the chest. Use that left arm as leverage to pull yourself a little deeper. Be kind and gentle with your body, not trying to go to your deepest twist just yet. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, see if you can go a little bit more. And then inhale, slowly come back through to center, arms up, extend, reach through the fingertips, draw in through belly, exhale, hands to heart. Good, now we're gonna go with some side bending. So let's take one hand down, doesn't matter which one, and have it kind of close to your body. Now as you bring that left, that hand down, try not to bend into your elbow so you don't collapse, but keep long on the bottom side of the body. And then opposite arm will comes up. Good. So now we're gonna reach through the fingertips, extend. As you breathe, exhale, slide the supporting arm away. So now you have less support using more core. And then go ahead and extend up and over. Good. Once you found your limit, rotate your chest and look up towards sky. Holding there, three, steady breathing. Two, try to keep your right hip and right knee down. Four, lengthening through the fingertips. I counted backwards. And five, inhale, slowly come up. Nice and steady. And we'll do the other side. So start with the hand close. Reach up to find the length. Once you have the length, slide that hand away. Or maybe walk the fingertips away, however you feel. And then once you're extended, up and over, and then rotate your chest. 
So reach the top arm over the head instead of behind you. So up over the head. Yes. And then from there, rotate your chest and gaze up towards sky. Good. Very nice. Keep the left hip down, left knee down. Supporting arm is still working. Fingers pressing strong into the floor. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And inhale, coming back through to center. Good job. Roll the shoulders. Okay. We're going to come to the hands and knees next. So roll yourself up. We might not need the blanket until the end of our practice. Coming to hands and knees. So let's start here. Hands and knees plank. Knees together. Release your big toes. And your hands slightly forward of your shoulders. So prepare as if you were going to come into a push-up position. Now, squeeze through your fingers. So the padding of your fingers and your knuckles are what's engaging here. You don't want to put too much pressure in the wrist or in the kind of palm of the hand. And then as you can, lean forward. So now you're in actual more of a plank position here, but still on the hands and knees. Protract the shoulders. So move the shoulder blades away from each other. Keep drawing in through belly and try to keep the tailbone flat. And then exhale, retract through the shoulders, moving the shoulders back. So this is body awareness here. We're trying to create isolation of those particular muscles in the shoulders, in the shoulder girdle. So the rhomboids back there are kind of like, okay, there they are. So try to see if you can feel your way through those. So not really lowering and lifting, not bending through the elbows, just moving the chest and the shoulders. Good, good, that's it. Looks good. Let's do one more. Nice. You guys all got very good body awareness. And then come back to that protracted space. Now walk one foot back, tuck the tailbone under, and then other foot back. Now we're in our high plank. So our high plank is like a push-up position. So we don't want butt sticking up in the air. We don't want butt sagging down to the floor. So nice and square. Keep those shoulders protracted. Draw in through the belly, lengthen through the top of your get head, and then gaze down to the floor. Steady breathing. One. Good. Two. Nice. Crystal, press into your fingers a little bit more. Squeeze your fingers. Yes. Everybody, can you roll your weight forward a little bit more? See if that adds to it. If it's too much, you can always bring the knees back down. Five. Exhale. Let's chaturanga. Hug the elbows towards the ribcage, slowly lowering down all the way to the floor. Now, once you're on the floor, we're going to cobra, release the toes, inhale, lift the chest. So you wanna squeeze through your legs, squeeze through your glutes, roll the shoulders back, gaze down to the bridge of your nose, open your heart, engage into the muscles of your back. Not pushing into your hands, your hands are just there, but if you were to move them, wouldn't change the position of your back at all. Exhale, slowly release, tucking the toes under, Pressing yourself back onto your knees and then release all the way back to child's pose, balasana. So let's start the first one with the knees together, hips down to the heels, walk the fingertips forward, lengthen, 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 and then exhale, forehead comes down between the arms. Steady breathing here, one. Balasana position is a resting posture. But if you have any tight hips or any tightness in your ankles or your feet, this might not feel too rusty. So just adjust, make do with what you can. Doesn't matter if the forehead touches or doesn't touch, let your head hang. Try to find release and surrender. And then inhale, slowly roll back up to tabletop. Coming back to where we started. Now we're gonna add a cat and cow. So separate the knees hip width. Back to hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, open heart, lift chest, lift the tailbone up. Gazing forward, shoulders back, open your chest. Exhale, curl it under, cat pose. Tuck the tailbone under. So we're flexing through the spine here. Press into the fingertips. Gaze towards your belly button. Really press away as you tuck your tailbone under and tuck your chin to chest. Two more, inhale, cow pose. Open heart, lift chest, exhale, cat pose. Round it out. Use the full extension of the breath to find the posture. One last one, inhale, cat, or sorry, cow, opening heart, lifting chest, exhale, cat. 
full breath out, finding the roundness in your back, strong fingers. Now, come back to a flat back, tucking the tail, the toes under, tucking the tailbone under slightly. We're gonna lift the knees slightly off the floor. We're gonna hold there just for a few breaths. Contain, contain your protraction of the shoulders. So really keep those shoulders protracted, try not to sink through. And then exhale, press back, downward facing dog. All right, let's break down our downward facing dog here for a moment. So make sure your hands or palms are nice and flat and go ahead and bend your knees. So stay on your toes, balls of your feet, bend your knees and move your chest towards your thighs. So you wanna to gaze towards your knees or your upper thighs. Strong fingers, so don't let all the weight here be dumped into your wrists and into the heels of your hands. Good. Make sure that your down dog is not too wide nor too narrow. You should be equally distributed between your hands and feet. Now let's go ahead and pedal out this dog. Let's take the dog for a walk. So bend one knee, straighten one knee, sway through the hips, keep moving the sits bones up and back, creating length in the body, chest moving towards the thighs. And then exhale, see if you can press both heels down towards the floor and find steady breathing here. One, good, steady, steady. Two, keep protracting, separating those shoulder blades away from each other, strong fingers and knuckles. Three, looks good. Make sure that you're nice and wide apart, hands and our shoulder width apart, feet are hip width apart, but you're not standing on your feet. You're kind of equal balance between hands and feet. One more breath, good. Inhale, look forward between your hands. So now we're looking forward, we're moving the shoulder blades back, lift up onto your toes as high as you can, and then step one foot, step other foot. Again, step one foot, step other foot, and then release the heels down and bring your weight now solely to your feet. Bend your knees. And let's hold on to opposite elbows here. We're gonna release more into the back. So reach the elbows down. Try to keep your rib cage and your thighs pressing against each other. So your pose might look more like a seated squat than a lifted squat, that's fine. As you're ready, start to extend the legs. So we're working on trying to create length through the backs of the legs. We're trying to stretch the hamstrings here. So it's better to bend your knees and keep your torso against your thighs as you lift the hips than it is to be very separated with your legs straight. So this is not as a good idea as this is, lifting up. And then exhale, bend the knees again, sit back into your little bit of a squat, lift your head. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, try to straighten the legs. Hold there. Rolling the weight forward. Remember, it's not about locking out your knees. Softness in the knees is fine here until we find the flexibility. And then exhale, bend the knees to release the hamstrings. Keep the chest pressed against the thighs. Last one, inhale, hips up. Keep your torso, your rib cage pressed against your upper thighs. Gaze is between the shins, looking back. Relax the shoulders, steady breathing. Good, and then exhale, release the hands, walk the fingertips forward, palms down, walk the feet back, back to downward facing dog. All right, now we're gonna isolate through some sides with another vinyasa, so looking forward between the hands, take your right leg up in the air, three-legged dog, strong fingers, strengthen here through your body, keep your left heel down, try to lengthen as much as you can, maybe gaze towards your left knee. Steady breathing, two, almost there. Keep pressing the left heel towards the floor, even if it doesn't touch. Strong fingers, strong knuckles. And five, looking forward between the hands, right foot steps all the way forward into a big lunge. Good, you might need to make some adjustments and kind of walk that foot up. Once that foot is there, left knee comes down to the floor. So two options here. You can take both hands on the inside of that right foot or you can have one hand on the inside, one hand on the outside. Right now, what we're gonna do is just try to find openness to that left hip. So let's move forward and back. Another good choice, if your hands don't quite come to the floor, is to have your hands on blocks because this really gives you mobility. Good, nice. Just nice gentle rocking back and forth. 
And then we're gonna rock as far forward as the body will allow, and then as far back as the body will allow. Maybe moving through the toes, as far forward as the body will allow. If your left toe is tucked under, you can kind of press into that left toe. Exhale as far back as the body will allow. You're moving with your own limitations. And one of the things that we wanna always try to focus on during our yoga practice is non-judgment. So as we move through this and you find yourself only moving maybe fractions of inches, <laughs> you say, okay, this is where I am today. And that's okay, because you're doing your work. And then coming back to the front, so the right knee is still bent. Everybody go ahead and bring your hands on the inside of the foot and walk that right foot to the edge of the right of the mat, the right edge of the mat. Set yourself up here for our dragon pose. We're gonna keep that left toe tucked under and straighten through that left leg. See what happens, good. Remember, blocks, super handy because you can bring your hands to the block and you can find lift there and you can still find your stretch. And your blocks have levels so you can be really high with your block if you need to. Try to press that left leg nice and straight flexing that left heel back, sitting strong into the right knee. Make sure that right knee is hugging your right shoulder, so don't let it pop out to the side. And then come forward onto that left toe. Stay there, stretch into the wrist, strong fingers. And exhale, take it back. Bring the left knee down. Bring the right knee back. Sit back for Balasana. Take a rest here. Observe the right and left sides of your body. Easy, steady breathing. Notice your shoulders here as you extend the arms forward. If it feels like it's too much, you can always release the hands to the feet. And then inhale, come back up, <clears throat> back to tabletop, tucking the toes under, pressing up to downward facing. We'll do the other side. So starting with our three-legged dog, left leg up in the air, point through the toe, right heel presses down, reach and lengthen, strong fingers, extending through that left leg, right heel nice and grounded, two, gaze towards your right knee or right thigh, three, steady, easy breathing, kick up, four, and five. Inhale, look forward, and then exhale, let's take that left leg all the way through. You might need to kind of lift through the fingertips here to find your left foot forward, wiggle it forward. Once the left leg is in place, slide the right foot back, bring the right knee down. And then again, you can keep the hands on either sides of the foot as you rock front and back. You can use yoga blocks or you can bring both hands to the inside of that left leg. And then just remember as you rock back and forth, moving with your own mobility here. So if you can't go too deep, if you can go deep, go. But if you can't, just stay where your body allows. Never forcing to the point of any kind of pain. Discomfort, absolutely. Okay, not so much. Nice. When you come forward, try to push with that back toe. So you're kind of like pushing yourself forward. And then let's go ahead and come back to starting point, back to center. Both hands on the inside of that left foot. Walk that left foot out to the side. Remember, use your blocks if you need them. Find your hands grounded and rooted on the inside of your left foot and right leg straightens, press the right heel away. Steady breathing, good. Try to keep the hips down if you can. Nice, very good. And then that left knee, be mindful that it doesn't open out to the side. Keep it hugging your left shoulder. Yes, so your left toes, your left fingertips, and your right fingertips are all pointing forward to the top of your mat. Good. Strong protracted shoulders, right leg engaged because it likes to chill. Nice, one more breath. And exhale, release the right knee down. Take a moment here. Walk the hands back to the outside. Let's get a quick stretch on this side for the left hip. And then slowly, Coming back, bring that left foot back, Balasana. Take a moment of rest. Good, so we're gonna add on to those hip movements with some twisting. Inhale, come back to tabletop. Exhale, tuck toes under, press up to downward facing. 
Inhale, lift right leg up. Exhale, take it forward, this time on the outside of the, feet, of the hand. So right foot to the outside of the hand, set up your hands. Coming right into that same lunge we did before, so the left knee isn't coming down. Now, balance with your left hand on the floor or a block. Right arm up, rotate your body, look towards right fingertips. Open your chest. You can place a block underneath your left hand, try to strain your left leg. Exhale, bring it down. Right hand down and maybe bend through your elbows to come down. Maybe the elbows can come to the floor or you can bring the elbows to a block. So you have options here to make all the postures accessible for you. Mind your right knee, make sure it's pointing more forward than it is to the side. And hold. If this is really tough for you, you can always bring that left knee down. Steady breathing. Yeah. Good. Couple more breaths here. Hips down. And then hands on the floor, lift yourself back up. Take a moment, going for a wide pyramid. So with your legs, don't change the position of your legs, just slide your right leg straight. And then you can walk your hands on either sides of your right foot, find your wide legged pyramid. So another option for this one too, with blocks again, very handy. Bring the block to the back of your right leg, find yourself here. So this is like a, like a split legs, like you're getting ready to do the splits, but we're not quite going there, not today anyway. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so we want to try and work on pressing the right toes down and reaching the left heel back. Again, holding onto the block is very handy, so don't um, not use it. It's important that you find comfort here, especially when we hold this posture. Another option is two blocks on the floor next to your right ankle. That's gonna give you a little bit of lift too. And remember your blocks have all kinds of levels. So you can come to the tower position of the blocks. This should be a lot more accessible. If this is easy for you, then you don't use the blocks and you wanna fold your chest so you bring your chin towards your right knee. Your right hip moves back and your left hip moves forward. So if this is hard for you, just stay with the block, stay lifted. Try to straighten that right leg. Yes, keep working on straightening that right leg. Exhale, bend the right knee. Both hands on the inside of the foot again. Bring your weight forward, left knee down, right knee back, sit back, balasana, take rest. Oh, thank goodness for balasana. Yes, this is a good pose. And getting ready for the other side. Inhale, lift the head. Exhale, roll to the tabletop. Tucking the toes under. Inhale, lift the hips, downward facing. Exhale there. Left foot reaches up towards the sky. Inhaling, lengthening through that left leg. Exhale, looking forward. Left foot steps all the way forward on the outside of the fingertips of the left hand. Keep into your lunge here so that still the right leg is engaged. Steady breathing, bring right hand to the floor, left arm up for your twist. Open chest, look up towards left fingertips, hips down. So we wanna bring the right hand down, left arm up. Yes, good. Open the chest, strong fingers of the right hand, lengthen, you can have a block underneath your fingers. Exhale, left hand down. Good, now we're going to go for that press. So straighten through that left leg. Walk the hands, uh, left foot in a little bit. Walk the hands in, find your split here. You can shorten your distance if you need to. Oh, I, I forgot the lower down, we'll do it after this. So you can use your blocks. For me, I find that if I'm feeling really tight, the one block behind the left calf really helps to lift everything up so that I can adjust the hip. So you want your right hip forward slightly and then your left hip moving back slightly. This is a deep stretch in the back of that left hamstring. So honor your body. If it's too much, soften through your left knee, but try not to bend. It's not a lunge. Take a moment, no worries. You're doing awesome. Now, if this is easy for you, maybe your left toes are down, maybe your right heel is touching the floor, then maybe you can fold and bring your chin towards your shin. If this is tough, just stay where you can maintain. 
and there's going to be this a sense of pull in the back of the left leg. Pay attention that the pull is not, it's not behind the knee, nor by the hip, because we want the pull in that meaty part of the muscle. So that's where we want to feel that. Also, maybe even in your calf. Maybe you feel it somewhere totally different. It's okay, just observe, feel where you feel it. Don't fight, stay present, stay engaged. Surrender to what is and let go of expectation. You don't have to do everything perfectly every time. And then exhale, let's go ahead, bend that knee and we'll go to the lower one, which I skipped from before. So walk the hands in front once more and then maybe bend your elbows. So you might decide that just bending the elbows is enough. That might be good enough for you. Otherwise, you can bring a block and bring your elbows to the block. And then observe how one side is very different than the other. Maybe on one side, you were able to bring those elbows all the way to the floor, and on this side, not so much. So we're just trying to get some weight off the wrist here while we hold the stretch. That's why we wanna bring elbows down, yes. So try to bring your hips down, because if your hips stay up, you won't be able to get those elbows in a comfortable position. Yeah, you can use, there you go. And then you can also keep that right knee to the floor. It doesn't have to be lifted. If the right knee is on the floor, make sure it's behind the hip, not underneath the hip. If you feel good and strong, try to straighten that right leg. See what happens. Move the shoulders away from the ears. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, hands back to the floor. Move your block, left foot back. Let's do a chaturanga, high plank. Lower down, chaturanga, nice and controlled, chin forward, try to hover. Inhale, press up to upward facing. Let's hold our upward facing dog here. So just take a moment, separate your feet hip width. Let your hips relax down. So relax your glutes and legs. Open your chest and shoulders and then gaze to the tip of your nose as you lift your chin up. Exhale, curl over the toes, come to downward facing once more. Good job. Hold here. One more sequence here before we start to move into some back bending. So let's take right foot up towards the sky, three-legged dog, just like we did before. Hopefully this is getting a little easier for you. This time we're gonna bend that right knee and point the toe to the left side. So we're gonna start to open that hip. Now I have all kinds of levels in this class. Look out from underneath your right shoulder and stay there. If you've been coming for a while and you want to flip your dog, then you want to listen to what I'm saying. Otherwise, you're not going to listen. Ignore everything I say from this point on. If you're moving on, lift up through the left toes and then exhale, bend the left knee, roll the right toes down, lift the hips, roll the shoulders back and find your flip dog. Opening the heart, lifting the chest. Good. But keep looking out from underneath your left armpit. That's it. That's what's going to get you in that movement. Exhale. Everybody flip back. Everybody meet back and downward facing with the right leg lifted. And then exhale. Right foot comes forward. Step it forward. Bring the left knee down. Okay. Good. Now walk that right foot to the left edge of your mat and bring the right knee to the floor. This might be like, what in the heavens? Not today. So if that's the case for you, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let the right hip come down and kind of sit in this, what do you call this? Like, I don't know what you call this shape. Lightning, lightning bolt? bolt. Sure. Like a lightning bolt shape with your legs. Okay, so this is option one. Sitting here and then rotating your body forward. So this might be where you stay. You can also use a block, bring your elbows to the block and try to find your, your way here. For those of you that are a little bit to come more into the pigeon posture, you wanna lengthen through that left leg and then you're gonna have a gap, probably, maybe not, underneath your right hip. So then you can use your blanket or a yoga block, place it underneath that right hip and then exhale, elbows down. So whichever do you decide to be in, the lightning bolt shape or the pigeon pose shape, be there, find stability. Try to bring the elbows to the floor if the elbows come to the floor easily, forehead to the back. So you don't have to bring the forehead down. Just observe. And if your body gives you the cue that your movement is there, then bring the forehead down. Good. And if you're in this lightning bolt shape, just try to kind of release, relax. It's not about forcing. If you're in the pigeon pose, then it's a little bit more work. 
but it's still, you're still working no matter where you are. Good, let's hold there and connect with breath. Sometimes these poses can be held a really long time. And when we first get into them, there's all this tension happening and the body's kind of like, why are you doing this? So as we hold and as we relax and as we steady with the breath, it's 16, it tends to a lot of times soften. So see if you can find that point of just enough effort and just enough ease. There will be a balance between those two. One more easy breath. If you're in the lightning bolt shape, you're gonna stay here. If you're in pigeon pose, lift your head, slide your hands up. You can lift your head if you're in lightning bolt shape too, but don't, don't continue on from here. Right hand is on the center, and then you're gonna bend your left knee, reach around, grab your foot, and then roll your shoulder back. So this is only if you're in pigeon pose. If you're in that lightning bolt shape, you can stay down. Good. And other way. Yeah, I'm like looking at you, I'm like, something's <laughs> off. <laughs> Good. And then looking back over that left shoulder, draw that heel in towards your body to stretch out through your quad. Steady breathing. If you can't grab it, it's okay. Try not to cramp up, no worries. A strap can come in handy too, or like an extra towel so you can reach the foot. And then exhale, slowly release, back to center. Everybody come back to that um, original pigeon pose position. So if you're in lightning bolts, just come onto that left knee. And then exhale, press up, slide your right foot back. We're gonna chaturanga again. Exhale, lower down, hug the elbows close to your rib cage. Good, nice, so strong, inhale. Upward facing, keeping up. Exhale, downward facing. And pedal out those legs, walk it out. Sway the hips, observe. Steady, calm breathing. Before we move to the other side, we're gonna do some couple lifts and lowers. So in your downward facing dog, inhale, lift your heels, draw in through your belly, and extend through your back. Exhale, heels down. Good, again, inhale, up onto the toes, lift the heels. Exhale, lower down. One more, inhale, up onto the toes, lift the heels. Exhale, lower down. Good, now let's do it on the other side, left leg up towards the sky for your three-legged dog. Remember, if this is your first class, just stay here. Don't have to overdo it. You have a lifetime to practice yoga. If you wanna go a little deeper, maybe bend that left knee, point the toe to the right side and look out from underneath left armpit. Stay there. This feels really good. Only if you've been coming, if you're one of my students, so Sudhakar, you can do this. You're gonna go ahead, Jen, probably you too could try. You're gonna bring that left foot, bend the right knee, come onto the right toes and try to bring that left foot down to the floor as you elevate the hips up. Keep the left arm extended. Good, good, that's it. Open the chest, Mindy, try again. Gazing up towards the fingertips, strong right arm. And exhale, roll it back. So those types of moves really take a lot of flexibility, strength, and understanding. All right, <laughs> left foot slides forward, all the way forward. Right knee comes down. We're gonna take that foot over to the right side and bring the left knee down. So come in, everybody, let's go to that lightning bolt shape again. So this is where you might wanna be. Elbows to the floor, finding as much flexibility in your hips here as you can. Otherwise, you're on your right knee. Maybe you're using your prop to help support your left hip. And then when you're ready, everybody bring those elbows down. Find yourself in the best position you can. And then maybe forehead to the floor, if that's accessible. There's no right or wrong necessarily with our practice because our poses are gonna look different each day we try because our bodies are different each day we wake up. So find yourself in this position without judgment. Just be here. Let go of anything that no longer serves. Settle in, focusing on the breathing. 
Whatever tension or tightness you're feeling in your body, make a conscious effort to soften there. Maybe just by bringing awareness to that part of your body or by drawing breath to that part of your body. The breath kind of just soothes you into the pose. Not struggling, not fighting, finding that nice balance between effort and ease. In Sanskrit, in our yoga, uh, the yoga language of yoga, it's called sthira and sukha. Sthira being effort, will, drive, and sukha being ease, softness, release. So we wanna always incorporate those two to balance out our practice. And then slowly with the next inhale, we're gonna lift the head, walk the hands in. If you're in your lightning bolt shape, stay there. Otherwise, if you're in your pigeon, left hand on the floor, right arm back, bend your right knee, grab a hold of your right foot. Look back towards your right foot. And good, you got this time. And then exhale, bring the right foot in towards the body. Like you want to bring your right foot to your butt or to your right hip. You cannot grab it, no worries. You can also do this with the legs straight, rotating the torso, looking back over right shoulder. So that's an option too. One more breath. And exhale, let's release. Hands down. Press into the right leg, remove the prop, back to your high plank, chaturanga, lower down, inhale, upward facing, lift up, move with control, move with ease, exhale, downward facing, good, stay here, steady breathing. Let's do two more deep breaths. One more, lengthening through the spine. And exhale, bringing the knees down. Separate your knees wide, big toes touch. Sit back, balasana here with the knees wide feels a little bit better. Walk the hands forward, let your body rest between your thighs. And then either bring your chin, your forehead, or the top of your head to the floor. Steady breath. One more inhale. Exhale. Good. We're going to finish up with some back bending and some twisting. So come back to your tabletop position. And let's try to jump forward. In our Saturday morning class, we do a lot of jumping forward and jumping back. So I like to put it into my other classes just to build the body awareness and strength. So exhale, come to your downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward between your hands. Step your top of your right foot to the back of your left wrist. Press strong into your arms like you're going into a handstand. And then left foot to the back of the right wrist. Stay lifted, stay strong. Your knees are between your elbows. Now wiggle your feet in between your hands until they can extend forward and you can sit down. Don't worry, that takes a lot of time. Good, keep going, Crystal, keep growing. You can, <laughs> you're like, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, sit your butt down. <laughs> there you go. We'll keep working on it, but that was really close. If you just wiggled a little bit more, you get through. Okay, <laughs> Saturday we do like, I don't know, 500 of those, a lot. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so now we're in a seated position. Dandasana, hands on other sides of your hips. Flex your feet back, so you're rolling your thighs in. Lift the chest and rib cage, roll the shoulders back, gaze down to the tip of your nose, so slightly forward and down with your chin. Hold here. It does not look like much, but Dandasana position gets us set up for a lot of our back bending and a lot of our seated postures. Keep flexing the feet, engaging through the thighs, contracting through the quadriceps. One more breath. And then exhale, Paschimottanasana. We're gonna reach forward. See if you can grab your big toes. Now, here's the thing. If you're reaching for your big toes, but you're kind of pulling back like this, they're gonna be so far away, you'll never find them. So better option, maybe grab your shins right below your knees. 
and then lift your chest. And as you're here, maybe slide your hands to your ankle, lift your chest, maybe to the sides of your feet, lift your chest. Maybe you grab those big toes, lift your chest. Good, wherever you are, whatever you found, exhale, fold. So whether your hands are still right by your knees or at your ankles or the sides of your feet or your big toes, surrender to the fold, let it go. Just like our standing forward fold, Uttanasana. And this one, the rib cage hugs down and relaxes over the thighs. Shoulders move away from the ears and the top of the head reaches forward. Try to keep your eyes open, your gaze to the tip of your nose. And then inhale, lift halfway. Keep holding on to whatever you found. Exhale and release. Okay, we're going to set up our blocks for the first supported bridge. So actually don't set it up yet. Just have it where you can, have, where you can grab it. Do you need a block? You can use one of mine. Do you need, anyone else need a block? Okay, good. All right, so lay all the way onto your back. Separate your feet hip width. We're going to do supported bridge pose. Your block has three levels. This is the lower level the rectangle or middle level, and then the tower position, the highest level. So let's start with either the low or the middle. Inhale, lift the hips, and then slide the block underneath the sacrum. So the sacrum is that kind of, uh, well, for me, it's a bump that comes out there, but maybe you don't have a bump. It's that area right below the waist and above the glutes. So you're gonna find the sacrum and place the block on it so the block is supporting you. And then you can just stay here for a moment and just notice how that feels. You're not really working into the legs too much. You're just trying to find a nice long spine. Some of the weight is in your shoulders. If this feels too hard, lower your block to a lower level. If it feels too easy, try to take it up a level. So if you're gonna take it up to the tower position, you probably have to come to your toes. As you elevate the hips again, place the block at the sacrum once more. And then let the feet come back down so that the soles of the feet are flat. And now we're going to stay there. So we're going to hold whatever position you decided to work with. This is stretching the hip flexors on the front of the body. It's creating a natural, easy supported back bend. So you're not forcing, your back muscles aren't working too hard. And for your arms, you can rest them out to your sides. You can have them up overhead or down towards your feet, whatever feels good for you here. Steady, easy breath. If you feel like you want to work a little bit more here, feel free to engage your legs and glutes and press into your legs. You may or may not come off the block, but if you get tired, remember you can always resettle back onto the block and just stay there in the supported version. This is our bridge pose. We oftentimes in other classes do this without the support of the block. So just get a little body, mental, muscle awareness of what this pose feels like in your body. And one more deep inhale. Try to relax to the back of the neck. Exhale. If your arms are up overhead, release them down by your side. If you're at the highest level of the block, tuck the toes and then lift through the hips, remove the block and allow your weight to come all the way down. Once the hips come down, bring the knees into the chest, roll around a couple times. Okay, moving into our twisting. So hug the right knee in, extend the left leg out. It may straighten, it may not. So you kind of get to choose here how straight or not you want that leg. You can try to flex through the left foot to press the calf down or keep the toes pointed to engage the top of the left leg. Now, hold the right knee with your left hand and rotate it over the body towards the left. Try to keep the right shoulder down, look to the right. Yeah. <laughs> These are delicious, good. And it's possible that right knee never even comes to the floor. No biggie, if it doesn't, if it's floating, just place your left hand on top and try to guide it down. But remember that right shoulder should stay down, gaze to the right fingertips, find the rotation in your body, easy, steady breathing. Good. And inhale, come back through to center, hugging the right knee into the chest once more. The left leg is still straight and extended. 
Now we're gonna release the right knee with uh, from the hands, but don't change the knee. Just lower your hands down to the floor and then lift and straighten your right leg towards the sky. Stay there. So you're making an L shape with your legs, point through your toes. One, keep pressing the left leg down towards the floor. Two, even if it doesn't touch. Three, try to point through your toe, bring that right leg closer and closer to your face. Four, and five. Exhale, lower the right leg down, all the way. Bend both knees, slide the left knee in towards the body, and slide the right leg away. Again, either flexing through the right foot, straightening all the way, or pointing through the toe, straightening only as much as your body can, can do at this point. Keep hugging that left knee in, holding onto the knee with the right hand, left arm out like a T. Take that left leg up and over towards the right. As you keep your left shoulder down, turn and rotate your body. Using your right hand as leverage to guide that left knee all the way to the floor if possible. Relax through your left foot, but keep your right leg nice and strong. Easy, steady breathing. Left shoulder stays down. Gazing towards the left fingertips. Feel the rotation in the body and surrender to whatever comes up. Let go. As your body gives you cues, maybe sliding a little deeper into the twist or coming out of it slowly. Either way, listen to the cues of your body. One more inhale. And exhale, slowly coming back to center. Hugging that left knee in towards the body, pointing through the right toes, pointing to the left toes, release the arm, and then inhale, lift the left leg. Try to get that left leg up and over your body. So you're actually trying, like as if you were trying to pull it with your hands, but you're just using the muscles of your leg. Draw in through the belly, gauge through that extended right leg. So the right leg is nice and rooted and grounded, either flexed or pointed through the toes. And exhale, lower the left leg down. Good. All right, getting ready for our Shavasana. You want to separate your feet hip width. Hands just relax to either sides of the body. Close your eyes. Use Shavasana at the end of every practice, whether it's a yoga drills class, a Nashtanga class, or even a vinyasa like we did today. Relax your shoulders. Feel the body weighted, heavy, rooted onto the earth. The points of contact your body's weight making with the floor, bring your awareness there. Start to deepen and lengthen your breath. Now bring your awareness to the points where your body is not making contact with the floor. Behind the wrists, at the lower back, between the shoulder blades, back of the neck. Lots of areas behind the ankles, behind the knees that are not touching the floor. Feel light and airy there. We use our Shavasana as a way to release any lactic acid we've built up in our muscles to come back to an equanimous state. To resettle the nervous system after all of that work we did. Take rest.
slowly and gently. If you've lost contact with your breath, come back to conscious breathing. Observe your inhale. Observe as your belly, rib cage, and lungs lift and expand, drawing in the breath. Maybe there's a pause at the top of the inhale. Right before you exhale and begin to feel the belly, the rib cage, and the chest sink down towards the floor. Again, maybe a slight pause at the end of the exhale. And it all repeats again. This constant pattern. Drawing in, accepting the breath is the gift. Pausing and then exhaling, releasing, letting go. As you feel ready, start to add a little bit of movement to the fingers and the toes. Maybe rock the head side to side. Start to move through the wrists and the ankles. Maybe bend the elbows, bend the knees. Let's come to a constructive resting pose. So this has the feet planted as wide as your mat and the two knees fold in towards each other. The tailbone is tucked under slightly as you bring one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart. Take a couple of deeper breaths here. And as we exhale that last second breath, let's roll over onto the side. Doesn't matter which side, pick a side. Roll over on that side. You can use your bottom arm as a pillow. Let your head rest. And I invite you to see if you can remain with your eyes closed through the end of the practice today. Really focusing inward, connecting to that inner experience. As you're ready, pressing into that top hand as we make our way back up to seated, sliding ourselves up. And you don't have to worry about setting any props up or anything, we'll only be here for a moment. Cross-legged if that's comfortable, legs extended or whatever position is comfortable for you. Palms together at the center of the heart. Observe here how having come full circle from when we first started our practice to now, notice what has changed and what has stayed the same. Take a nice deep inhale, drawing in the vibration of gratitude, feeling thankful for our bodies and all that it does for us. And then as we exhale, we release out love out into our family, our friends, our neighbors, our society, our country, our world at large. Let this practice be healing for ourselves and everyone we come in contact with. One more deep inhale and we'll seal our practice with the sound OM. Oh. Namaste. Namaste. Beautiful work today, you guys.